Hi and welcome back. In the previous video we added quite a bit of code to make our blocks stack. And now that they do stack properly it's time to have our game clear complete lines. And do some other cool stuff. Let's get right to it. To have our program clear complete lines to the game area class let's add a public void method named clear lines. Clear lines consist of three stages. First we need to find a complete line. Then we remove it, and finally we shift down everything above that line. To find complete lines we need to traverse the background array by row bottom up. Then we traverse every row until we encounter a null cell. A line that has at least one null element is not complete. And when we do encounter a null cell, we stop traversing that row and move on to the next one. Now there are two cases in which this loop terminates. One, it terminates because a termination condition is met. And two, it terminates because of the break statement. Case one, when the entire row was checked and no null element was found, means that the line is complete and must be removed. Case two though, means that the line is not complete and must be ignored by the method. In other words, the way our code is written, we have no way to know whether the line is complete or not. A classical programming technique here is to introduce an additional variable that will be modified in one of the two cases, thus letting us know whether the line is complete or not. Let me show you what I mean. Let's add a boolean variable named line filled and set it to true inside the outer loop. Now when we encounter a null element inside the loop, we set the line filled variable to false and terminate the loop. Next, below the inner loop, we check the value of the line filled variable, and if it's true, we clear the line by setting all elements in the line to null, and calling repaint after that. To see if it works, we need to call this method. Where do we do that? We need to clear lines every time a block is landed, and a block is landed when it can no longer move downward, when we move it to background. In other words, for now, we can call the clear lines method inside the move block down method, right after the move block to background method call, like this. And if we run our game now, we will see that complete lines in fact get cleared. Now we need to make our game shift everything above the cleared line down to close the gaps. But before that, not to let this clear lines method grow too big, let's split it up into parts. First of all, let's move this line clearing part into a separate method named clear line. We also need to give this method the number of the line it needs to clear. and call it inside the clear lines method. Now below the clear line method call, let's call another method named shift down and pass it the variable r as a parameter. To make NetBeans stop yelling at us, let's declare the shift down method. The shift down method will traverse the background array by row bottom up starting at the row specified by the int parameter r and finishing right before reaching the zeroth row. Inside the loop, the elements of the background array are set to the values of the elements immediately above them. Please note that if the value of the variable row gets to zero, this code will throw an out of bounds exception, because here it will try to access an element in the row negative one, which of course doesn't exist. However, we might need to modify the topmost row of the background array. But since there is nothing above the zeroth row, we can set all the elements in the row 
to null by calling the clear line method inside clear lines method, like this. And now if we run our game, we will see that clear lines do get shifted, but not all complete lines always get cleared. See, this one was skipped. Why? Let's look at the outer loop in the clear lines method. Say we clear line number 5. Then we shift everything above line 5 down by 1 and move on to line 4. However, since we shifted everything down, the next line to check is not line 4, but the same line 5. In other words, when we do call the shift down method, we need to make sure that the value of the variable r does not decrease. How? Since it will be decreased by 1 at the next iteration, we can sort of artificially increase it by 1 here. And if you run the game, we will see that it doesn't skip lines anymore. Another issue is that when a block doesn't fit in the game area, meaning the game is over, the program throws an out of bounds exception. Let's click this error note to have NetBeans take us to the line of code that throws the exception. So the error happens in the move block to background method, and it happens when a part of the block is out of bounds. How do we fix this? When the block can no longer move down, before we move it to background, we need to check whether the block is out of bounds. And if it is, instead of moving it to background, we stop the game and display a game over message. First of all, let's add a method that will check whether the block is out of bounds. Let's make the method public and name it something like is block out of bounds. The method will return true if the block is out of bounds and false if not. So the return type of the method should be boolean. Now, how do we know whether the block is out of bounds? Well, if its top row is not in the game area, the block is out of bounds. And the top row is not in the game area if the block's y position is... Right, less than zero. Now, where in code do we call this method? Since it's the game thread class that is responsible for moving blocks down, and since it needs to stop when the game is lost, we should call the method in the game thread class. However, as block out of bounds method must be called before the move block to background method to avoid that out of bounds error. Because move block to background method is currently called in the move block down method of the game area class, there's no way we can call the is block out of bounds method in the game thread class before the move block to background method is called. In other words, to make sure is block out of bounds method is called before the move block to background method, we need to call both in the run method of the game thread class. In addition, since the clear lines method must be called after the move block to background method, we should move the clear lines method call to the game thread class as well. So let's delete the move block to background and clear lines method calls from the move block down method of the game area class. Now we need to make move block to background public to be able to call it in the game thread class. In the run method of the game thread class, we need to call the three methods. How? So when the move block down method returns false and the while loop terminates, we check if the block is out of bounds. And if it is, the game is over and the game thread object must stop. To make the game thread stop, we need to terminate the main while loop. How do we do that? Right, we can add a break statement. Let's also have our game print game over, just for now, of course. Now, if the block is not out of bounds and the game continues, we need to move the block to background and clear lines. Let's see if it works. And when the game area is filled, we do get the game over message. There's an issue though, we can still move the block around even though the game is over. So let's modify our program so that it doesn't respond to keyboard key press if the game is over. 
One way to achieve this is to set the block variable of the game area class to null when the game's over, and then have the methods responsible for moving the block do nothing when the block variable is null. First, where in code do we set the variable block to null? A lazy solution would be doing that in the isBlockOutOfBounds method, and I guess that's fine. So let's assign null to the block variable before returning true. Now inside the four methods that respond to keyboard key press, we add a null check, like this. And now if we run our game, And we'll see that we can no longer move the block around if the game is over. Now let's make this game a little more exciting to play by adding a score display and having the game speed up as the score increases. First of all, to the game form, let's add two labels that will display the score and level. Let's change the font to something a bit more prominent and make sure everything is positioned nicely. Also, let's not forget to name the labels accordingly. If you're having trouble making sense of what just happened on the screen, I recommend that you refer to the previous videos of this series. Now to the game form class, let's add two public void methods that will be responsible for updating the labels. How do we update the text of a label? Right. We call this set text method. Now, where in code do we call these two methods? At what point does the score change? Right, the score changes when we clear lines. There are several ways to calculate the score. For now, let's take a very straightforward approach. Let's have the score represent the number of lines the player has cleared. How do we get the number of clear lines? We can have the method responsible for clearing lines return the number of lines cleared. What method is that? Right, the clear lines method of the game area class. So inside the method, let's declare an int variable that will store the number of cleared lines. Then we need to have the variable incremented every time a line is cleared. And finally, at the end, we need to return the number of lines cleared. Of course, to make it work, we need to change the return type of the method from void to right, int. Now, where do we call clear lines method? We call it in the game thread class. Since we call the clear lines method in the game thread class, it seems reasonable to keep track of the score in the game thread class as well. So let's declare a member variable to store the score. Now every time we call the clear lines method, we should add the return value of the method to the variable score. And now we can update the score label on the game form by calling the update score method. How do we access it though? Update score is an instance method, meaning we need the reference to the game form object to be able to call the method. Any idea how we can get it? Since it's a game form object that instantiates the game thread class, we can have the game form pass its own reference when it instantiates the game thread class. In other words, we can modify the game thread constructor to have it take a game form reference and store it in a member variable.
Now inside the run method of the game thread class, we can use the gf variable to call the update score method. To make it work, we now need to switch to the game form class and pass a game form reference to the game thread constructor. Now how do we have the game form object pass the game thread constructor the reference to itself? Any ideas? Right, we can use the keyword this. And now as we clear lines, our score goes up. Feel free to change the way the score is calculated. For example, you can multiply the number of cleared lines by a certain number. You can also give bonus points for clearing more than one line at a time. And we're now moving on to the level display. How do we approach level increase in our game? For now, we can do something simple, like increasing the level by one every time the user clears three lines. Because the level depends on the score, and it's the game thread class that keeps track of the score, it seems logical to have the game thread class keep track of the level as well. So let's give it a member variable to store current level. Let's also make sure we initialize the variable to 1, as we probably want the level to start from 1, not 0. Let's also store score increase, necessary for level increase, in a member variable. For now we'll set it to 3, but we can change it later as we wish. So now in the run method, after updating the score, we can calculate the level by dividing the score by score per level and adding 1. We need to add 1 because the initial value of the variable level is 1. And if the result is greater than the current level, we assign the result of division to the variable level and update the level display. And it seems to be working now. But nothing happens when the level goes up, which is not Tetris-like. So let's have the falling speed increase as the level goes up. To increase the falling speed, we need to decrease the pause that is currently set to 1000 milliseconds. To achieve that, let's add a couple more variables to the game thread class. So we need a variable that we will use to tell the sleep method how long it should sleep. For now, let's name it pause and initialize it to 1000. We we'll also need a variable that defines the increase in the falling speed per level. For now, let's set it to 100. And now inside the run method, when we update the level, let's decrease the pause by speed up per level. Finally, where in code do we use this variable pause? Right, we pass it to the sleep method, like this. If we run the game, we will see that the falling speed does increase as the level goes up. Awesome. So step 5. Complete. Alright, in this video we added an important part of a Tetris game. Line clearing. And based on that, we now have our game keep track of the score and level. As usual, please make sure it's clear to you how the code we added works. Otherwise, it might get difficult for you to follow the content of these subsequent videos. And this is it for this one. In the next video, we'll add other block types so that our Tetris game gets more Tetris-like with blocks other than the L-shaped one. See you then. Bye.